You found that people are constantly telling you the things that can kill you? Yeah. Yeah, all the time? It's great fun, isn't it? All the time. They just won't stop. It, it sort of, it, it possibly serves a purpose because at, at the heart of all the joking around, there are all these things that can kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, it, it's, it's unsettling. So we had these two French guys come over, Pierre and Emmanuel, and we went up to the far north Queensland rainforest where the stinging tree lurks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about stinging trees that I don't? <laughs> anyway, we went up where the stinging trees look. <coughs> and uh, Pierre, who was the director, he obviously had it in his mind that we were going to have to do some great trek through the rainforest, like a Tarzan movie, you know, over hill and dale and up things and down vines and over rivers and waterfalls and wrestling crocodiles and all that stuff. And we pulled up to Miller Miller Falls in the car park and stopped the car and Marina said, there's one. <laughs> hanging in the front of the windscreen like that. Anyway, they let them grow in the car park? <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't let them grow, I mean, there's no plant them, but you know. So anyway, that's not one of the nasty ones. That'll just sting you, it won't kill you. Right. So, uh, so we, we, we spent the weekend terrifying the two French people by telling them things like, you know, first thing, when we go into the rainforest, it's on the side, of the park on the side of the road, you have to, you'll have to take your trousers off, or pull them down, and spray your legs with this industrial strength insect repellent to keep the scrub ticks off you. And he said, take my trousers off, they get here. This is something you do to embarrass French people? <laughs> I said, yeah, possibly, but you're still going to have to do it, because otherwise you get scrub ticks on you. I said, you're lucky it's not summer, the leeches would be dropping out of the trees on you, and they're about that long. They can concuss you. <laughs> what they do is they hang in the trees, these leeches, and they wait for a carbon dioxide signature to go underneath, which is an animal breathing, and then they let go. You can fool them with dry ice. <laughs> You switch the dry ice machine on and everybody watches the ceiling carefully. We'll see them all go like... <laughs> and I'll just be, this is what happened here. This is a lot of leeches here. <laughs> there. <coughs> this is I'm warming up for the nature documentaries. <laughs> and so they said, no. I said, we, you. <laughs> I said, so we're going back to the, uh, we will go back to um, our motel, we'll, we'll go swimming in Cairns, off the beach in Cairns. Oh. I said, well, you could, but there are these things called box jellyfish. <laughs> I said, but it's alright because you can't see them, they're invisible when they're in the water, totally invisible. I said, if you are stung, I said, are they poisonous? I said, well, if you're stung, you could put vinegar on it and it might help, but nobody's really worked that one out yet because everybody who's been stung is dead before they get out of the water. <laughs> so the best thing to do is to go swimming with the vinegar tucked into your shorts. <laughs> and just swim around a bit like that, right? He said, so I will not, um, I will not go out into the water, I will wade and I will just paddle, you know? He said, well, you could. <laughs> well, we've got this thing called a stonefish. <laughs> So you can't see that either, because it looks like a stone. And, uh, but it's good news. Good news is, if you step on it, you don't actually die. Uh, but the pain is so intense, apparently, that you double up and forget you're in the water and you drown. <laughs> they said, no. <laughs> I said, we. <"Wee." laughs> so he said, I said, but don't worry about it, because if you know, swimming around, you can. It, it's good actually, because if you have the vinegar, you can sort of. Pour it over yourself, and that'll make you taste nice of the shark or the crocodile that gets you. It's like a French dressing. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, we got along splendidly, we really did. And uh, we were drinking a lot of red wine. And he said, what is, you know, the Australian attitude to red wine? I said, well, I, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but I can tell you what mine is. So, go on then. So what you do is you drink the wine, and then if you like it, you drink it again. <laughs> until it's gone. And he thought that was brilliant. So, 
So after about the third or fourth bottle of, of wine, um, he said, we are going to make an English translation of these shows. And I said, when you do the English translation, I said, I get to do the voiceover. Ah, ah, ah. And he said, yes, we can do that. So I went, oh, that was easy. <laughs> so I'm off to Paris to be David Amber. I think that's going to be splendid. <laughs> Hopefully by next year I'll actually have the DVD and we can go down to Trocadero and watch it. <laughs> now, what am I going to sing? I'm going to sing you a uh, lovely Eric Vogel song.